We have just thought about what organisational learning is. So how does that impact on organisations? And what is a learning organisation? And what has coaching got to do with creating and maintaining a learning organisation? The objectives for this session are that you'll be able to define the learning organisation, explain the advantages and disadvantages of the learning organisation concept, and evaluate the use of coaching in developing a learning organisation. Firstly, what is the difference between organisational learning and a learning organisation? Burgoyne, in 1995, says that organisational learning happens anyway, whether it's single, double or triple loop learning. But a learning organisation is one that manages its own learning processes to its advantage. It's one that creates an environment and processes in which individual team and organisational learning can happen effectively and easily. Hughes, in Propagating the Learning Organisation, said, The learning company or organisation is not a defined end state. It's the journey, not the destination. As Carl Rogers put it, we are all in a process of becoming. Hence, organisations that embrace learning commit to an ongoing process. It would be a contradiction in terms to say, we are now a learning organisation. We've got the plaque on the wall. What's our next project? This concept of a learning organisation being a journey rather than a destination is essential to the whole concept. Once an organisation sits back and says, we've got there, inevitably the learning has ceased and, paradoxically, it is no longer a learning organisation. Pedler, Burgoyne and Boydell define a learning organisation as one which facilitates the learning of all its members and continuously transforms itself as a whole. It links the learning organisation concept firmly with continuous learning. Senji describes it as organisations where people continually expand their capacity to create the results they truly desire, when new and expansive patterns of thinking are nurtured where collective aspiration is set free, and where people are continually learning how to learn together, thus incorporating the importance of triple-loop learning. Mayo and Lank suggest that a learning organisation harnesses the full brain power, knowledge and experience available to it in order to evolve continually for the benefit of its stakeholders. Cunningham, 1995, warns that the learning organisation has started to degenerate into a general term linked to the idea of more knowledge and competence sharing in organisations. That's not a bad thing, but it's far too limited. It doesn't accommodate Argyris's case for double and triple loop learning. That is an approach which gets people to re-examine and change fundamental beliefs and assumptions. So why would an organisation want to adopt learning organisation principles? Firstly, learning is essential to provide rapid, continuous change and continuous improvement in organisations. Then there is the competitive advantage of learning quicker than other organisations and, in particular, than competitors. This is especially important in providing greatest value for customers. Thirdly, that it's essential for organisations to keep up with the rapid change in their external environment. The learning organisation culture is one that promotes and actively encourages creativity and new ideas. Not just the thinking up of new ideas, but also the implementation and experimentation and the learning from that. And one more is that Organisation's success depends on engagement and learning at all levels of the organisation. And the learning organisation concept is one that promotes that learning and engagement. Problems with the learning organisation concept can be found if it's implemented with speed and without careful consideration of the implications and objectives. Some organisations get hold of a few of the principles and attempt to implement them very quickly without fully aligning all the strategies and cultural aspects of the organisation and then expect to have success. Problems can also occur if there is superficial implementation and that's linked to the rapid implementation where the planning and putting into practice is not given sufficient consideration. 
Problems can be found if it's regarded as a management fad. In some organisations, its implementation is seen as a fad and then not taken seriously. It can also be a little difficult if it's considered as a panacea for all the organisation's ills, where it's implemented in time of crisis or in an effort to be seen as being progressive. And then problems can arise if consideration is not given to triple loop learning. Some organisations see the learning organisation as a fancy name for a learning and development plan and so think it is about implementing training courses etc and completely miss the importance of creating the conditions for triple loop learning. And finally, it can be seen as a quick fix which can be achieved by sending all managers on a short training course. And it's thought that all that needs to happen is to send all the managers on a learning organisation course and that will be it. This exercise is to help you think about the learning organisation and the value of coaching in that concept. Write down what are the important considerations in a learning organisation. And two, evaluate the use of coaching as a strategic intervention to create a learning organisation.